Okay guys, welcome to today's video, a long overdue video, which is a follow-up to the IPC Hammer video that I did a few months ago. So if you're not familiar with that, if you haven't seen it yet, IPC Hammer is a piece of software that's ported from PCM Hammer to be able to program the 03 and up GM instrument clusters, kind of the target goal of the program. Um, so first thing I want to address in this is I get a lot of messages asking, hey, will X dongle work with this software and here is what i have to say on that unless it is this dongle right here i have not tested it with the software i cannot verify that it works so the obd link lx does work with it i'm under the impression from what other people have told me that pretty much all the obd links work with it um, and there are other tools that work with it the other side of that is if you already own a tool for using it on PCM Hammer, it probably works with IPC Hammer. So that's just the first thing I want to start with because I get messaged all the time on that. And it's it's kind of like, well, I'm not going to tell you something works that I have not seen for my own self to work. If you've used one, a different dongle, comment down below. Uh, I know Mike has said other ones work and I trust Mike's judgment on this. I just don't want to tell people something works that I haven't used because I might tell you the wrong version of it or something. So I don't want to do that. I just know the OBD link LX works. Um, so what, now that we got that out of the way, let's take a look at it. So when I did the video, it was on version 15.8, um, which it, the version number starts with what version number um, of PCM hammer it was when he got started. So I think, I think it started with version 14 and then went to 15 and now it's at 15.8. Um, so that there are not, uh, 13 other versions of it. You know, it doesn't go back that far. The, it started with 14, then went to 15 and then went, uh, the, then the point number started, but yeah, so we're on 15.8 now. So we're two versions in. There's uh, some. There's been some changes to the software since I last did the video on it. You can also follow the software on uh, uh, PCMHacker.net. Uh, there's a, it's got its own thread in there. So uh, it, if you have specific questions, I recommend going into uh, PCMHacker.net, make an account, and uh, get, get to chatting in its thread on uh, IPC Hammer. So let's go ahead and uh, switch over to the screen. And uh, so take a look. the first thing I want to cover, I know I covered it in the last one, so this isn't really an update, but I want to cover it because I get asked this a lot too, is how do I test my instrument clusters? Well, at this point, this is how I test them. So I go into IPC Hammer and I click test ICP. It sweeps all the gauges and then it sweeps them all back. So it tests all the blocks on there, tests all the LEDs that are controlled by the uh, microcontroller. So the, you know, the check engine light's not controlled by the microcontroller, so it doesn't turn it on, but all the rest are controlled, uh, get tested by it. The one thing I wanna note on testing this way is that still doesn't actually test that the signal lines work for these two, because they are not on the, um, they're not on the class two uh, signal line. They're actually uh, analog signals that come in for the Speedo and Taco. So just make sure to individually test those afterwards. Um, you can just, you can use a signal generator or you can just take the two pins that are for that and tap them to ground and uh, that'll give them good enough signal just to make sure that they work. So you'll notice that the trans temp did not sweep and that's because this one is not programmed for trans temp. So uh, if, if it's not programmed for trans temp, it will not sweep. For some reason, I was under the impression it would sweep it either way, uh, but I was incorrect on that assumption. Uh, I, I was asking about that in the Facebook group not that long ago. But yeah, I was incorrect on my assumption that it was sweeping that either way. I guess I had made a mistake. Okay, so the next thing I want to cover is mileage correction on here, which is super easy to do. So we're gonna go to tools, and we're gonna go to mileage correction. And now let's just set it to 85,000 miles. So I need to put a five there. All right, one, two, three, and then four. So you need to add an extra zero to whatever you need because there's the 10th mile position that's stored on there. So just add an extra zero. Easiest thing to remember. So there you go. Now you have 85,000 miles on there. So yeah, ni nice and easy to do there. We have at changed our mileage and we get a perfect mileage there. So yeah, this makes uh, mileage correction very quick and easy to do. Uh, 
through IPC hammer. Now in this video, I'm not going to cover doing it because I did it in the last video and it still works exactly the same, uh, is actually programming the microcontroller, but it's a little bit time consuming. So we're not going to cover it in this video. Uh, if you do want to see how to do the, um, the microcontroller, uh, just watch my other video on this because it still works exactly the same. So just go back, watch the old video I did on IPC hammer, and that will cover how to write the OS or uh, write just the calibration. So next we need to go over how the uh, modify options work. Uh, adjust stepper calibration. I don't know when you would need to use this, but it does allow you to adjust the different stepper motors. So I'm not actually gonna mess with that because I don't uh, have a reason to. Okay, so here is the last portion of IPC Hammer we're gonna show today, which is the uh, Modify Options 03 to 07. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up, and you will notice uh, something right here. There's a bunch of checkboxes that don't do anything. Um, Mike is planning to add features there to the checkboxes. However, he's busy at the moment, so don't hold your breath on the feature change there. But it is something he's planning on doing. Just, again, he's doing this in his free time and he's doing it for whatever we donate. You know, he's not charging money for this. So uh, again, uh, don't pressure Mike to do anything. He is planning on doing something there though. So what you do get though, are you have, um, you get to change byte uh, 5.8 and 5.9, which I have highlighted over here, so that way if you're familiar with what the bins look like in these things, you'll know what those are. So, um, 5.8 is decide a couple of features, one of which is like, which displays right here, not, not this one, but that one. Um, and then, um, a couple of other little things are there. And then you have, um, uh, 5.8, which, uh, sorry, 5.9, which that one is where trans temp is. So let's go ahead and change this to uh, zero, zero, click okay. And it is now updated. So now let's do the test ICP. Okay, so uh, I, you have to reboot it. Uh, I, I didn't record that. Um, but at, so after you do make the change, you do have to reboot it uh, for it to recognize a trans temp. So now that we've added trans temp, test ICP, there we go. Trans temp now moves. So uh, we do now have a working trans temp and all the other stuff. So um, that's, that really covers all the features that I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, one thing that a lot of people uh, do ask for uh, select device. They want a uh, J54, sorry, a J2534 device on there. A lot of people own those. Um, that there is a port of uh, I, IPC hammer on um, uh, PCMHacker.net that uh, they uh, went ahead and turned back on that feature. Mike had it turned off because he was still testing it and having some bugs on it from my understanding and somebody else turned it back on. So if, if you don't own one of these tools, but you do own one of those tools, uh, there is uh, an option for you to use that. And I'm sure Mike will be turning it back on here soon uh, since they've been testing and using it uh, on uh, uh, PCMHacker.net. And, and actually getting it to work. Uh, so that that's really all I had for this video here. I wanted to show these other features that I did not show uh, in the previous video. Another thing just to be aware of on how these instrument clusters work is don't stress about programming the VIN number on them because once you plug it into the car, it actually will inherit the uh, VIN number. I, not sure if it gets it off of the BCM or the PCM, but it does get the VIN number from the vehicle and store it on here. So you really don't need to worry about setting the VIN number. I always get requests on like, hey, can you rebuild my instrument cluster and change the VIN number? I got it from the junkyard and then they'll send it in and it'll have the correct VIN number on it already. So yeah, 
it learns the um, the VIN number from the vehicle. From my understanding, that's my understanding. I don't own one of these trucks. I can't verify for a fact that that's what's happening, but uh, almost always when people send in an instrument cluster that's from the junkyard or whatever, and they go, hey, I know it's not my original one, it, uh, it pretty much always has the correct VIN number already on it. Uh, so my assumption is it gets it from the vehicle. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you learned something. And um, yeah, I, I'll have that same donation link in there for Mike if you do want to donate to him uh, for working on, on this software. Okay, and just because you see me using this to do it does not mean you need this unit. You, you only have to have this and have it plugged in to your connector. So if you want to wire this into the connector yourself, uh, you can do that. It, it will work. Uh, this is just convenient for me. I, I don't have one of these plugs wired into a regular plug. So whenever I use IPC hammer, I am always using this tool here. Um, but that's just cause it's super convenient for me. It's less stuff. I have to remember how to wire up and, and do. So I, I prefer to do it this way. Uh, but it is completely possible to do with just wiring in this guy to your plug uh, instead of going through this pass through here. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next one.